This is a book spoiler review for Season 5, Episode 3 of Game of Thrones. If you aren't a book reader, check out our non-book spoiler review. This review is going to be broken down by characters and settings, starting with Sansa. The Ramsay marrying Sansa bit is super screwed up. This means we are most likely not getting fake Arya, but does this mean Sansa will actually marry Ramsay and will get fake Arya storyline? Because I really don't want to see Sansa being taken care of by Theon, or abused by Ramsay. Going further, since we're probably not getting Mance or his men rescuing Sansa in the fake Arya's place, are we being set up for someone else too? Maybe Brienne and Podrick will be the ones to rescue Sansa? Theon, despite us not being able to hear his thoughts, or him having any real lines perfectly encapsulated what his character is going through and the conflicting emotions. But again, I'm really, really hoping we don't get to have Sansa torture scenes. Handing Sansa over to Ramsay seemed like a poor move on Littlefinger's part. He's giving away a woman he cares about and one of his most prized chess pieces. Littlefinger seemed to not know Ramsay is a monster, but we know Littlefinger likes to lie. So what is Littlefinger's plan? Is he counting on Ramsay hurting Sansa and then railing the North to her side? Does he really need Ramsay to do that? Wouldn't they just rally behind Sansa anyways? Or is Littlefinger hoping to marry them and then just depose of Ramsay so Sansa has Winterfell by blood and now through marrying into the Boltons, the current Lords of Winterfell? The deviation from the book is a bit shocking, but I'm waiting to pass judgment until I know how the whole thing pans out. While Littlefinger in the show isn't as clever as Littlefinger in the books, I'm holding out hope that he has some grand master plan. And I know this won't happen, but I really want Sansa to straight up stab Ramsay at their wedding and get revenge for her family. And don't worry, just because we heard the old woman say the North remembers doesn't mean we're getting cheated out of the speech. We still might get it. Hold on to hope. The Wall. Ollie is now Jon Stewart. Anyone else feeling like we're being set up for Ollie saying for the watch and joining in on stabby time? Because it's really starting to paranoia me now. Davos. Davos is seriously the man. His speech about accepting Stannis was well placed. Janos. This was a bit different than the books. In the books, we know Janos refuses to go to the castle and Jon allows him to sleep on it. When he finds Janos at breakfast the next morning, Jon gives him one more chance. Janos refuses. John first orders for them to hang him. John then changes his mind and tells Ed, fetch me a block. They change this around to make it flow a bit better in the show, I imagine. Instead of having Janos talk back to John and then the next day the confrontation happening, they just kind of squished it all together. The weight of it in the book is Janos betrayed John's father and he was now going to execute him Stark style, a beheading. There's no hesitation in the books. John knows Janos gave his father no mercy. In the show, we do see John hesitate almost as if he's considering mercy. And even though I've read the books, I almost thought he was going to actually spare him. And I think that was just to build more suspense for show watchers. And guess what? Sansa got her wish. Also, the nod that was promised. Any changes were worth Stannis' nod of approval. How is a man moving his head a few inches? So awesome. Aemon being sick is sad because we know where this is going. I hope we get the line. Egg, I dreamed I was old, and talk of the prince that was promised. If Aemon dies at the wall, will Sam then be sent to the Citadel to become a maester, leaving John open for stab time? Brienne and Podrick. We're getting more backstory on Podrick, and this makes me very nervous. Hopefully the show writers aren't like The Walking Dead, where backstory equals soon to die. Brienne's story of Renly was so well done. Brienne is a little more in the dark about Renly's sexual orientation in the books. With how the Sansa storyline is going, if Brienne is the one to rescue her, are we going to have a meeting between Stannis and Brienne? They would both be going to the same place, and a meetup is possible. I don't think Stannis will end up on the Iron Throne at the very and, but I also don't want to see Brienne kill him. Kyburn, get hype about Robert Strong. We saw the sheet move. It was a little unnerving how he didn't even bother to look behind him. This guy is seriously being set up for bigger things. Cersei and the High Sparrow, I am digging this setup. Cersei is getting way over her head and it's like watching a train wreck. The High Septon's walk of shame was a good way of setting up Cersei's future walk of shame without having to overly explain it to the audience. It was actually a really good move on the writer's part. Tyrion. Tyrion is seriously like a spoiled child. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I was super impressed with Volantis and the fact that we got to see another red priest. In the books, Tyrion has zero problems sleeping with whores, so I'm not sure why they were giving Tyrion whore PTSD. Sometimes it feels like they're just trying to whitewash his character. Also, could he have been more obvious about being a Lannister? 
I was once the richest man. I always pay my debts. Why don't you just get on a table and start screaming, look at me, look at me, I'm a Lannister. Also, good luck to rub a dwarf's head was in the show and I couldn't be happier about it. I did enjoy immensely the Daenerys prostitute and Jorah eyeing her hardcore. Really wish we would have seen him with her in his lap, but oh well. How Jorah took Tyrion played out a little differently, but it's still all good. His ending line was right on. Arya, even though I imagine the House of Black and White is a bit bigger, every scene here is really nicely done. Maisie nails Arya. I think my favorite Arya line of this episode is when the girl was hitting her and trying to play the game of faces and Arya goes, ow! cunt. Not sure why I love that line so much. Maybe it's just teenagers swearing. Maisie also did a great job conveying what Arya was going through while getting rid of her stuff. In the book, she strips naked, but that would have probably caused issues given her age. Her face when she's trying to throw the sword into the water made hearing her thoughts and memories of her family and home unnecessary. You could just see it all on her face. Marjorie, the beginning with the small folk calling out Queen Marjorie, Queen Marjorie, Cersei is just so PO'd. Marjorie is using her mad woman skills to get Tommen under her finger. And it's not that I don't think Marjorie cares about Tommen, but she sees him as a way to get what she wants. She quickly went from sex to, hey, let's talk about your mother. Since she consummated the marriage in the show, does this mean we're not getting the Marjorie adultery plot? Even though she did consummate it, they still could charge her with adultery. But it almost appears like instead they're setting it up for Loras to be the one taken to trial. Oliver works for Littlefinger and Cersei is contacting Littlefinger and I wonder if it's to talk about Loras and his business at the brothels. After Tommen talks to Cersei and Cersei realizes something is up, she goes and sees Marjorie and it was super painful. Cersei seemed to be genuinely reaching out to her and Marjorie just kept burning her. I wish we had some wine for you. It's a bit early in the day for us. Ouch. You could see how taken aback Cersei was by that. And then Marjorie just kept driving it home that Cersei doesn't have any power. Marjorie has everything Cersei wanted. Tommen, the crown, and power. Also, is anyone sad we're not going to see Tommen out lulling beats? So those are my thoughts on this episode. You can write yours below. I really want to hear people's thoughts on Littlefinger's decision and future plans.